65 years after Chuck Yeager first broke the sound barrier, flying in an experimental rocket-powered airplane, Felix Baumgartner ascended to 127,852 feet in a pressurized capsule raised by a stratospheric balloon. Then he made his free fall jump. He rushed towards Earth at supersonic speeds before parachuting to the ground. This amazing mission broke world records and holds the potential to provide valuable medical and scientific research data for future pioneers. One of the keys to making this happen, I told Red Bull early on, was it can't just be a stunt. It has to be a flight test program, uh, a, a perspective buildup of jumps and of testing, jumping out of helicopters, jumping out of aircraft, high altitude aircraft. And, and so that's what this display really shows you, is it teaches the public that it wasn't just a one-time thing. It was developing a system and thinking about the future for how do we implement what we learned to be able to apply it to other industries. From January 24th through March 16th, visitors to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force can experience the interactive Red Bull Stratus exhibit. Learning firsthand about the Stratus project and getting an up-close look at the actual capsule and spacesuit used in Baumgartner's record-setting mission. Visitors to the museum can use multiple touchscreen displays to learn more about the mission. The display is a great interactive display. People can come and learn and see about what happened in Stratus and understand that it's an entire flight test program. Baumgartner and his team spent over five years training and preparing for the mission, which was designed to improve scientific understanding of how the body copes with extreme conditions near space. We took all the things that we knew and we put that to, uh, you know, how do we deal with uh, primary suit failure? And we had a we developed a treatment protocol for exposure to vacuum, and that's been published in Aviation, uh, Space, and Environmental Medicine. And the first author was Air Force Major, now Lieutenant Colonel, and that was his master's thesis. We made a huge uh, contribution to the future folks that do this because we have a treatment protocol that we can do as soon as we get to the, the crew member back on Earth. We can save, uh, you know, potentially save their lives. In addition to the temporary Red Bull Stratus exhibit, the museum also has displays related to retired Air Force Colonel Joseph Kittinger, who previously held a record for a 102,800 foot jump in 1960. Kittinger's jump was made during a time when no one knew if a human could even survive a jump from the edge of space. I'm honored. I'm honored. But, you know, I'm, I'm here because of some great people that work for me. Uh, I had a great team of people working for me. Uh, engineers, scientists, airmen that uh, helped me accomplish the research that I did. Just like on this project here, Felix had a great team of people working for him. He was a lucky person to get to do it. Uh, I was a lucky person to get to do it, but we both had great teams. Kittinger shared his knowledge during the 2012 jump, serving as the primary point of radio contact during Baumgartner's ascent. Kittinger still holds the record for the longest freefall. When he was standing up in that door of that capsule getting ready to jump, his heart rate was about 160. Mine was 200 watching him because I was just more excited than he was because I knew what he was going to, what was going to happen next. 